Hey, Todd Martin here with The Walking Code. In today's video, I want to discuss the problem of osteoarthritis of the knee, or wear and tear arthritis. This is a really common painful condition that people get as they get older due to wearing out of the joints, most commonly on the inside portion of the knee. Now there may be multiple different factors involved in the development of osteoarthritis. Age is one, injuries is another, there may be genetic factors, but it's commonly thought that abnormal stresses on the joint over long periods of time are what contribute primarily to the development of osteoarthritis. And what are those stresses? Now we know not everybody gets osteoarthritis in the knee. There are people who live into their 90s with no wear and tear, but other people who are having their joints worn out symmetrically on both sides when they're in their late 40s and 50s with no prior injury. So what is the stress on the knees that can explain this difference? I think the problem is the way people walk. And in order to prevent osteoarthritis, you must make sure that you're walking in a way that's going to keep your knees lined up with even weight distribution over your feet, even weight distribution between both outside and inside of the knee joint, as well as proper spinal alignment. These things are gonna help reduce the stresses that can cause wear and tear over time. Now, I was doing quite a bit of research recently on tips that people can use to possibly mitigate arthritis pain in the knees once they already have it. There are a lot of research studies being done on potential things like, oddly enough, turning your feet out and walking with duck feet, which may be able to reduce some of the stress, or inversely, turning your feet in and walking like that I think both of those solutions sound a little bit odd because I think most people realize that duck foot walking is not a healthy way to walk and walking with your feet in towing like this probably is not a normal way to walk. But people who have osteoarthritis probably, in my opinion, were not walking correctly to begin with. And so changing what they were doing may be able to reduce the stress that they were getting on the knees. Now, one of the things that correlates with osteoarthritis development is something called the knee adductor moment. This is the force of the rotation of the tibia adducting the knee. Adduction is moving a joint towards the midline. So if we're getting more knock need there, that is adduction of the knees. And that rotational force of the tibia moving inward as people hit the ground and change weight onto the leg that's gonna be the new standing leg, that force is positively correlated with earlier and more advanced development of osteoarthritis. So people who have greater knee adduction moments when they walk, higher force rotating inwards tend to develop more pain in the knees and more rapidly advancing osteoarthritis. In fact, people who have normal knees without osteoarthritis tend to have a knee that becomes more varus during walking. Varus is when the knee moves out this way versus valgus is when the knee moves in this way. And so people who walk normally and have normal knees tend to have their knee move outwards as they're walking versus people who have osteoarthritis in the knees tend to have their knee move more valgus or inwards, higher adduction moment when they're walking. So what I wanna to do today, instead of talking about changing your gait to something that's completely not normal, like duck foot walking or in towing like this, I wanna talk about how we can walk normally with our feet facing straight forward and 
have a very minimal knee adductor moment. So hopefully if you already don't have knee osteoarthritis, you can walk this way and avoid ever getting wear and tear in your knee joints to begin with. So let's talk about why people might have this high knee adductor moment. The issue here is how we use the core, meaning our waist rotation and our hip actions. When people walk bending forwards like this and pushing into the knee, I'll do it from the side view, walking like this, it seems like a very rapid and purposeful walk. I used to walk that way a long time ago and I thought I was just a really productive, fast walker. I also wore out the insides of my shoes when I did that, and I just thought that was because I was born with flat feet. Years later, when I figured out the core mechanics and developed the walking coat, I realized that I had been completely walking incorrectly, and that wear on the inside of my shoes, which would have been going to the inside of my knees also, just like a car tire wearing out, was not because I had flat feet that I was born with, it was because of the abnormal way I was walking. And here's the specific action that happens with the core. When we walk normally, we place the heel on the ground and then we use our lower abs on the same side as the heel that just placed to help pull the body forward. And our lower abs, rotate and tuck the pelvis. So they rotate the lumbar spine towards that leg. My left lower abs rotate to the left or counterclockwise and help to tuck the pelvis under and pull the body forward. From the side view, I'll go with my right leg. After I place the heel on the ground, I use my lower abs on the right, which are gonna tuck the pelvis and turn out to the right with a rotational action. That rotation is going to pull the knee out in this varus direction instead of collapsing the knee inward. And the lower ab action is gonna be what's primarily pulling the body forward. I'm not relying on gravity falling into it like a lot of people believe when we're walking. The faster I walk, that means the faster I have to use my lower abs to pull the body forward. So there's always going to be a correlation with my lower ab action and my changing of weight. If I place my foot forward like this, flat position, and I shift my weight forward, I'm gonna tuck my lower abs to pull the body forward. And when I say pull, it means I'm not pushing off of this rear leg. I'm not extending my glute on the left to push the body forward. I am lifting my left leg off the ground by pulling it forward using my psoas muscle here in the hip. So if I was standing, with this leg in the air, I can use my psoas muscle to pull that leg up. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm pulling that leg up or forward. At the same time, I'm tucking with the lower abs on the right. You can hopefully see my knee go from this position here where it's lined up over the inside of my foot. And as I shift the weight forward, pulling from the lower abs, the knee moves out, not in. So that position out as we're walking is gonna be a normal knee action. So that knee adductor moment, which is the tibia going inwards, if we're changing weight correctly, is actually going outwards. So there is no force of the tibia going in this way because all of the tibia motion is being guided by the rotation of the lower abs. And then when I step forward and I place the next foot, I'm going to activate the left lower abs and they're going to pull this knee out into this more varus position like people do when they have healthy knees. 
when we push or lean forward when we're walking, this sort of thing, what we are doing is leaving that root or that tucking of the lower abs on the rear leg and we're leaning forward from the upper waist and pushing into this position. And then we start over and we push. We go from this one leg position and push, one leg position and push. Instead of when we walk normally, correctly, we go from this two leg weighted position and we shift, we place, now we have a two leg position and we move from there. My tango coach used to say we move from two legs to two legs. Not one leg to one leg. Because when we move from two legs to two legs, that allows us this time to tuck and change weight correctly using our core, which is gonna keep the knee lined up. When we move one leg to one leg, we crash and then start over. And we are not using our lower abs as we're crashing. So my knee is gonna go inward as I crash down and then I change weight. Here, I might be tucking the lower abs as I change weight and collect back to this position, but the damage is already done. I already crashed. And then I step again, the knee goes inwards, I crash again. So we have to avoid this crashing action by using the lower abs and moving first by placing, pulling forward, stepping through, placing, pulling forward, stop the pushing off the rear leg. And I believe if people do that, pull forward correctly, we can have the knee adductor moment gone because we're really moving the knee in the opposite direction at the speed controlled by the lower abs. I'm just gonna walk around a little bit with this normal pacing, when I walk, I'm not crashing into the heel. I place and roll, and the roll is controlled by the rotation of the lower abs. The placement of the foot is controlled by the rotation of the upper abs, and that is why the arms are swinging the way they do. They are connected to this rotation of my upper waist my pelvic action is connected to the rotation of my lower waist or the lower abs. And we coordinate the upper and lower with our hip actions to make the walking action smooth. And you can see I'm placing on the bottom of the heel, not the back edge of the heel. And I'm not placing by crashing into it. You see some people in videos talk about how we shouldn't walk heel first because you are crashing and putting on the brakes like that with a locked out knee. Nobody walks with a locked out knee, but people do walk by crashing into the heel that way. So what we're gonna try to do when we're walking is be very meticulous about the way we place the foot using the core place on the bottom portion of the heel, pull forward, and then we are going to use the hip muscles in the front of our hips, not the glutes in the back, to pull forward, then place the heel, pull forward with the lower abs, making sure that knee goes out with the lower ab rotation. Use the hip muscles in front to pull the body through, place and pull. No lean is necessary when we walk with rotation of the waist. I can walk in whatever circle I want to. All of this is guided by rotation of the waist that's placing the foot where I want it to place, changing weight to that leg, and then pulling through. So three phases in a normal walking cycle. 
First phase is to place the heel, then to use the lower abs to pull forward, pulling the knee out as you do that, and then using the hip muscle in the front to pull through. Upper waist, lower waist, hip. Upper waist, lower waist, hip. When you do it that way, we're not relying on gravity to fall through each step. That fall that's gonna create that knee adductor moment, damaging the inside of the knees. We pull with the waist, lower abs, getting that knee in the correct position. And if we walk fast, we're just using the lower abs faster. We're rotating faster with the upper waist to place. We're rotating faster with the lower waist to pull. You don't have to lean forward to move faster. You see a lot of people when they're walking for exercise, they might walk normally at a slow speed. And then when they start to move for exercise, they start pitching forward. And I can even feel it in my knee, that adductor moment when I pitched forward, because there's nothing tucking to bring my knee into the proper position. I hope this makes a lot of sense to you. So you can practice before you get osteoarthritis of the knees, practice walking correctly with your feet facing forward in the direction you're traveling because they'll still be researching this idea of turning your feet out or turning your feet in, but those are not natural positions for walking. And even if it does temporarily reduce your knee pain, because it's probably stopping you from pitching forward like that, it's gonna be causing other issues like excess stress on the ankle joint and on the arch of your foot. But get your own physical therapist and physician's opinion on that if you've already got osteoarthritis. But for my point of view, and for those of you who don't already have a worn out joint, try to walk correctly with your feet facing forward and proper control from the core in order to reduce that knee adductor moment, keeping your knees lined up properly throughout the gait cycle. I hope it helps. Click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Click on the bell to get notifications for my future videos and I will see you in the next one. Oh, by the way, leave a comment because that really helps the YouTube algorithm to push these videos out to more and more people and I would greatly appreciate that. Have a good one.